Elder Scrolls 6 is indeed in Hammerfell and we have a release date. Rough guide. Let's talk about that now. Yeah, confirmation has come up that the Elder Scrolls 6 is in fact in Hammerfell like we all thought. And they're aiming for a 2025-2026 release date. Now if um, a game used to take two years to make, now it takes about four. That means we're right at the beginning of uh, this is Hammerfell's production cycle it hasn't got very far so there won't be much to tell so let's have a look at what's the events that have gone on before and let's see what we can extract from that now I'll make a few assumptions here let's assume the Stormcloaks won in Skyrim that's the first thing because the Stormcloaks were a pot line there for a reason and if they didn't win then it's, it's the same old same old isn't it nothing changes if they did win that changes everything Right? Now, the Empire without Skyrim is a weak, pathetic thing, ripe for the plucking. Anybody could conquer it. Anybody. Skyrim itself was always strong on its own. Whether it's independent or part of Stormcrux, it would remain strong. I reckon there would have uh, news would have come out eventually. You know, Ulfric had been uh, manipulated by the uh, Falmor, and he would have either declared war on the Falmor, he'd have been overthrown. Something along them lines. But we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the fact that Skyrim is independent. It's led by the Stormcloaks. They're, they're the new rulers of Skyrim. The Empire is weak. It's got a weak king who's been, well, weak king, a weak leader who's been assassinated. They're waiting for a new new leader. Then we've got the Dragonborn. The Dragonborn, like like I explored it, the, the content in, in Return to Helgen, he was, he was really uh, the rightful ruler because he had the dragon blood. The dragon blood are really the rulers of Cyrodiil. So it could be that the Skyrim and the Empire were united under the new Dragonborn. Now, if that's the case, we might have a Morrowind-style plot for Hammerfell. Hammerfell basically were abandoned by the Empire during the Skyrim period or the Great War. And um, veteran legionnaires joined the resistance Hammerfell and pushed the Falmar out. But Hammerfell basically just, you know, beat the Falmar on their own. Whereas the Empire just fought to a draw at most. Now if you imagine a united Stormcloaks, you know, a Stormcloak of the Empire under, say, a Dragonborn leader, a new Empire, a new Emperor. And then Hammerfell, which is well known as a region for having a king on the top of every hill. So any hill, there's a new king there. There isn't any, isn't the act really united, right? And then so long comes the dragonborn, and he does a kind of Morrowind style thing where a creature, well, a man born from uncertain parents and uncertain time, blah, blah, comes in and suddenly unites the whole country. You could see Hammerfell is is really the plot line that unites a new empire under a new leader, a new Tiber Septim. Says it's a, it could be that that is the solution, because if you look at the enemy, the enemy, as in the Falmor, is all elves. Everything else is all mankind. That's how the Elder, Law, Elder Scrolls law breaks down, humans versus elves. It's always about humans versus elves. Now, the Shivering Isles, not Shivering Isles, the Somerset Isles, Vailingwood and elsewhere are all based, are all controlled by the Dominion. That's three regions. If you look at Hammerfell, Skyrim and the, and the Empire, you know, Cyrodiil, that would be three regions. Three regions versus three regions. That would bring the, state, the balance back. It, it, it'd create a situation where the Falmar couldn't just stomp across everything. So I think all three regions have no choice but to uh, ally themselves with each other, whether they wanted to or not, regardless of the state of any uh, civil war, or outcome of a civil war. But if the Dragonborn did rise to become more than just some random warrior that beat another Dragonborn and actually went on to lead Skyrim or even the Empire, then Hammerfell would be the next thing he'd want to bring into the Empire, or at least stabilise. And if that was the case then the battle for what happens next happens in Hammerfell. Hammerfell is where all the interesting stuff will start to take place. And from that on, at the end of the Elder Scrolls 6, 
when they're planning the Elder Scrolls 7, we will hear the story being told in the next game, Elder Scrolls 7, about how these regions united against the Falmore, and it'll move on from there. That's what I'm expecting. That's what I think is a possibility, because it'd be a good, good plot line. There'd be an awful lot of uh, localised stuff for Hammerfell, because Hammerfell, like I said, a king on every hill. There could be all kinds of stuff going on. You might find one particular king, you know, is um, worth following, and maybe he unites everything. You never know. But it wouldn't have to leave Hammerfell. The rest of it could be told as as law books in the game, like we heard from Morrowind and uh, how um, you know various people disappeared or died. You know, the story doesn't have to be seen for us. It can be written down in a book, and we can see the rest of it meshing together. But anyway, that's just me talking, it's me theorising about the next game. But it'd be interesting if it does go that way, because if it does go that way, and we do end up with Hammerfell, a region which we don't really know that well, says so that suddenly getting a ton of new lore, then the Red Guard will be as deep and meaningful as the Nords and the Dark Elves are right now. And um, I've, got, I've got a video planned for Dark Elves, explains why I like playing them, but... Anyway, what's what we need? Padding out, because they, they feel a bit shallow at the moment. And I think they need to be presented in a strong light in order to make them a playable faction that many people want to try. See you in the next one.